Look at the idiot. No, just, just look at the idiot. Come on, everything is under control. What's going on, Kuju? Come on, Sato. Your whole family has been embarrassed here. Where have you been? They said they cannot let us enter because what? We have not paid for her. I know you guys should relax now. You guys gave me the, the, the responsibility to, to, to do logistics. I've been out there logisticating. What's logistics the issue? It doesn't make any sense. Hey, what's the issue? Do you remember my face? I remember your face. Go on. Uh, wait, wait, wait. You're sure you remember my face? I remember your face very well. Alright, go on. In the instruction my boss gave me is nobody had lodged. You're mad. I'm sorry. Are you okay? Embarrassing the kujus like that? Sorry. See, I give you two minutes to call your boss and rectify everything, or else I'll change it for you right now. Now, the movie begins this time with Maugbe and his friend Chooks running their new bar. It was fun, not until the next day when they start calculating their expenses, only to find out that they are at loss. Maugbe says, This wasn't the plan, no. This wasn't the plan. Chook says, Ah, are you not the one saying we should invite artists? Now, to cut down costs, why don't we invite local artists instead of expensive ones? Then Chook's phone rings, a call from Ebi. Then we see Mao Si filming another episode of her cooking show, Mao Si's Kitchen. And then we see Mao Yo on a call with his girlfriend talking about visiting their elder brother. Next, we see Mao Pei, another one of the Kuju, bringing gifts for her niece's birthday party. Everybody is coming here today because it's going to be lit. But once you enter, first thing is to get sanitized by Dr. Mao Ti. Now, Mao Si and Ebi are also getting ready to attend the party. Mao Si asks if Ebi is ready. Now, Ebi is busy calling Chooks earlier, with Chooks refusing to pick her call. So, she tells Mousy that Chooks is not picking her call anymore. Mousy says she doesn't understand why some people like ignoring people's call and they will not even bother to call back. As she's speaking, her own phone then rings and guess what? She herself did not pick the call. Such irony. And see, you are not picking your call. Come on, come on. Are you going or not? Now, she and Ebi arrives with their own gifts. MG and Chooks also arrives. Now, everybody brought gifts for their niece except MG and Chooks. So, Mountain asks, Where is your gift? He starts looking for an excuse. Mountain just walk away. Now, the party begins with Mountain making sure everybody is well sanitized. Now, Ebi sees Chooks and approaches him just to talk. He quickly brings out his phone, pretending to be on a call or something. Hmm. Now, what's going on between these two? Now, that night, Mao Yun says he has a special announcement to make. MG jumps in. I know, I know, I know. She's pregnant. Aha! See, you all think I'll be the first Kuju to get someone pregnant out of wedlock, right? <laughs> no. Lily says, no, I'm not pregnant. Come on, she's not pregnant now. Mao Si says, okay, I know, I know. You guys are breaking up, right? I knew it. Aha. They replied with, no, they are not breaking up. So, what could the news be? Lily then says, we are engaged with excitement. Everybody was calm, like, eh? You are engaged, so what? No one is excited. And the reason is that these two have already faked an engagement before in the first movie. So the Kujus believe this is another fake engagement. Mao Yun insists that, no, 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 we are serious this time. Dr. Mountain says, mm, once irresponsible, is always irresponsible. Mao Yun says, no, for real. This is for real, guys. See, see, see the ring. Well, if this is for real then, they clapped for them and wished them congratulations, even though they saw a ring during the first fake engagement. Mousy, I can't hear your voice. Mousy then gets emotional. Congratulations guys, it's just that this is going to be the first Kuju wedding since mama passed. MG says, guys, get a tissue, she's about to start crying. I will slap your face. Uh, slap me now, <laughs> this family is just funny. Now, alright, what's the plan? Lily says, ah. They would like to have the traditional wedding here in Nigeria and they would like to use the family house. Family house? Everybody gets quiet again. Ah, what's wrong? Did I say something wrong? Then they broke the news to her that the family house is gone. Apparently, they gave it to a contractor to renovate. Instead, the contractor demolished the house. What? Lily turned to her fiancé. And you didn't tell me. He says, he sees how excited she was and he doesn't want to post a bubble. Mayon says, it's Mountain's idea. Mountain says, ah, he asks them to renovate, not demolish. Who asks them to demolish? Then all attention moves to DJ MG, Maube. Why, why, why are you guys looking at me? Mayon says, it's your responsibility to oversee the building. Maube says, ah, he cannot run a successful bar business and still monitor the house. So it's not his fault that the house is demolished either. 
Mark Pay, their elder sister, begins to cry. Why? She says, is it because she didn't go to school and she's not educated like them? That's why they make decisions like this behind her back? Oh, despite being the oldest female, she feels left out. Now, disappointed, she decides to leave the sitting. She was just tired of them. Now, while Abby is cleaning up, Chooks approach her, saying, Hey, Abby says, I think we should break up. Ah, uh-uh. She says she's tired and it's been six months of back and forth from him. What's the problem? Chooks couldn't say anything. Oh, if you're over me, just say it. Chooks still can't say anything. Then Abby says, Eh, well, she can't be with someone who doesn't know how to communicate. Lily is still angry at Maoyeon because he made her look silly in front of his family, knowing fully well that the house is no more. Maoyeon says that he's sorry and he would do anything to make it right. Hmm, anything? Hmm, Maoyeon says, hey, he hope he's not going to regret this now. Then we see Mountain feeding his little daughter while the wife is packing up some bag. Suddenly, the wife's phone rings. Hey, Lily, hi. What's up? The Mountain's phone also rings. And then MG's phone also ring. So something is about to happen. Quick disclaimer, this recap is for educational purposes only. The Kujus again is directed by the amazing Bjordan Steven. And this recap is not meant to replace that movie. And that should stop you from watching the full movie on Prime Video. Also, this recap contains heavy spoilers. If you are just joining us, you should definitely subscribe and turn on the notification icon. Hi, this is Sam. Welcome to the film village. All the men gathered at MG's bar, while the women gathered at Mousy's studio. So, Lily says, since the house is not available, she wants every member of the family to be part of their wedding plan. Dr. Mounty and his wife, Pamela, to be in charge of curating the guest list. Mousy is in charge of food and general welfare. Maukbe and Chooks is in charge of logistics. And Maukbe will be in charge of Ashwebi. Now, she says, Ebi should join Chooks. No, 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 no. Um, please. Let me assist my mommy. Now, in case you haven't watched the first part, Maokpe is a beast mother. So Lily added that her cousin Valentine, who is a stylist, will be joining her. Ah, no, no, I don't want that. Lily says, ah, she has promised him a long time ago and she doesn't want to break her promise. Oh, okay, no problem. Uh, I hope he's not a wala person. Lily says, no, he's not. Well, let's see Valentine. Here is Valentine. And the first thing he did is to look at Maokpe like she knows nothing at all. Maokwe start bringing out the fabrics from the bag. She's happily explaining which goes with which, why Valentine is yawning. Ah, ah, ah. What's wrong? Valentine says, is that all? She says, yes. No, 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 no. This won't do. Why? He says, they are all ugly. What? Maokwe gets angry and they begin to exchange words at each other. Even Lily could not keep her cousin in check. Do you know how old I am? Valentine says, you don't want to know me? Hey, <laughs> this guy is messing with the in-laws. See, hey, come, 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 let's go, let's go, let's leave this place. Maokpe and her daughter, Ebi, leaves. That night, Maoyo and Lily were talking about what happened earlier between his sister Maokpe and Valentine. When they hear a knock, ah, at this time of the night, who is it? It's Mousy. Ah, 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 at this time of the night. Welcome, Mousy. What's going on? She says, she's here because Brother Mountain just told her that the invite is uh, a plus one, as in plus one. Lily says, yes, the total invite is for 50 persons. Ah, ah. Mousy says, that cannot work. Oh. You know, our extended family alone is 50. Not to talk about the extended, extended family. Even mommy's society members and the members of the apostolic. Maoyeon was about to agree to the increase. I'm thinking, uh, no, 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 no. Quickly, Lily takes him to a private place. This is our wedding. Why are you trying to satisfy her? He says, he's not trying to satisfy her. The truth is, that number is too small. Lily says, mm, there's a pandemic. My parents are coming. So, for safety. And this is meant to be an intimate wedding. Maoyeon says, ah, have you ever seen an intimate Nigerian wedding? She says, well, this is going to be the first. Good night. The Maoyeon returns to meet Mousy. Mousy says, she said no, right? He answered. Anyway, when you start having marital and financial problems, just know that it's the village elders you refuse to invite. They are at work. Ha! Maoyeon says, hey, speaking of elders, I called Otumba. Now, Otumba is Mousy's ex. They broke up because Otumba's kid says they don't want their father to be with a lady that is their age. 
Anyway, Maoyan says he invited him and Otumba promised to take charge of the wedding. He will sort out the bill of wherever they choose to do it and he will also send gifts and donations. Maoyan says she has no problem with that. He can help if he chooses to. Thank God though, Maosi knows that Maonyo is actually after the money and gifts from Otumba. Now, MG and Chooks are already at the hotel they plan to use. Actually, MG came late because he took his girlfriend Rihanna out for a cleanup. By girlfriend, I mean his power bike. You get? Anyway, he is here now. And then the person Otumba sends to give them the money arrives. Remember, Otumba said he will foot the bills, right? So, Otumba's driver, Barry Wonder, arrives, announcing the arrival of Otumba's company. Where is the money? He says, it's in the purse. The purse? Huh? It looks small. Did Otumba send dollars? Take, call him yourself to ask. <laughs> anyway, he asked me to give you this. It's an ATM card with 5 million naira in it. Oh boy. Then the manager of the hotel comes out to take them on a tour of the place. Now, while on tour, they notice a building and Chooks ask, what do they do there? The lady says, ah, oh, that's our famous casino. Casino? You mean you have a casino here? Can we check it out? She said yes. Now, at the entrance of the hotel reception, there is a car parked there. So, when Mao Si arrives at the hotel, she couldn't drive further because, well, there is a car already blocking her. Move now! Nah. Move now! Nah. Ah. Then she steps out to speak to the driver, but instead, a man comes out to meet her. While Mao Si is busy ranting away, expressing an anger, this man is just crushing on the beautiful lady. Hey! Then Mao Si enters the reception. Mount Kuju for the Kuju weekend retreats, she says. The receptionist says, oh, um, she's in room 301. Now getting the key, another staff runs to them whispering something to the receptionist ear. Then they give her a room key. Ah, uh, I thought you said I'm in room 301. Ah, uh, that was a mistake, ma. That room is the regular room. They then take her to a first class suite experience. Hey, she is surprised. How? Mount Gwe surprised her on this one, or... Is it the Otumba's money that's doing all of this? Ah, she says, if her room is like this, how then will the honeymoon suite be? The next morning, we see Maugbe and Chooks in the room after having lots of drink, waking up from a hangover. Now, Chooks gets up first. After a while, he decides to check the Otumba's post. To his surprise, the money and the ATM is gone. Ah, guy, 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 guy. There's no money in this bag again. Where's the money? Where's the card? MG is just calm. He says, ah, they will call Barry Wanda later. There must be an explanation for this. See, wait, let me urinate. Now in the restroom, he finds the card. I've seen the card, Joe. Then they receive a call from the reception to come and pay for the hotel. Ah, ah. Now getting there, he said, he thought they've paid already. The receptionist said, no, you've not. You only paid for one night and you ask us to give you until today to pay for the rest. And also, the hall that you want to use for the wedding. Ah, 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 ah. She even gave them the receipts to confirm they've only paid for one night. Ah, what's going on? Okay, um, can we pay for the rest now? She says, no problem. Then he brings out the ATM card. And as she inserts it into the machine, your pin, sir, declined. Ah, she tried again and it was declined the second time. Insufficient fund, ABBA. She says, maybe it's the machine. Um, they can go out to try another ATM. Now, the ATM card is empty. How? Why? Now, as they were speaking, his brother, Dr. Maoyo, and his wife arrives. Quickly, they walk out of the reception. She says, Welcome, sir. How may we help? He says, My name is Mountain Kuju. Then the lady realizes, Oh, no wonder MG and Chu quickly walk away. Well, she gives him the key to his room. Now, outside, MG and Chu are still surprised, wondering what happened with the money. And by the way, where is Barry? MG keeps trying to remember what happened the other night, and then it struck. They've used the money. 4 million naira to place a bet at the casino the other night. Wahala. Then there is a knock at the door. It's Mousy. MG and Chooks refuse to open the door. They pretended as if they are not around until she leaves. Because there is a big problem now. They need to find 4 million naira fast before the hotel sends them out the next day. Quickly, they head to their bar and begin to sell whatever they can get their hands on. He sold his watch, sold his DJ table and everything. Now, Maokbe gets to the front desk to complain to the receptionist that the room they gave to her is not okay for both her and her daughter, Ebi. Then she sees a familiar face. Ah, ah, ah. Pastor! Pastor! Now, this pastor was the one she hired to help pray for her stubborn twins in the first part of this movie. Pastor says, um, ah, he's just living a baby boy life. Now, he's still a pastor, but this is just a temporary job for him. Okay? 
Now, Maunsi decides to go to check the hall they want to use for the wedding out. Getting there, the security refused to let her in, saying he has been asked not to let anyone in. Ah, why? Before we know it, Maunsi and Pamela also arrives. What's going on? The same thing, he refused to let them in. Now the couple arrives. The security refused to let them in. Ah, where is Maugbe? Then Maugbe arrives. He says, ah, he has paid and all. You see, call your boss or else I will show you my other side. Mountain asks MG to show him the receipt and prove that he has truly paid. Maugbe just quickly flashes the receipt for the rooms in his face so he wouldn't see it properly. The security then makes a call to his boss and the boss asks him to let them in. Finally, they are allowed in. Now, while checking out the place, the manager, Gloria, arrives to welcome the couple and all and then Maupe, the elder sister, says ah, she has a complaint though. The room they gave to her and her child, Ebi, is too small. How is she supposed to cope for three days? Three days? The manager was about to let the cat out of the bag before MG quickly jumps in. Ah, eh, um, secret is about to leak. He begs the manager to please give them a few hours more before sending them out. Remember? They only paid for a day, not three days. So instead of leaving after 12 pm, the manager says, Okay, he will give them until six. The manager agrees to show them that favor. Hmm, this is huge. How will MG fix this mess? That night, Chef Maunsi presented the she and her other chefs have planned to serve at the traditional wedding. Gome, she calls it. Ah, uh-uh. Gome. Strange. They brought out the food and Maunsi. Maupe and others were confused, like, what, what is this? Where is the food? Maupe says, ah, where is our normal wedding jollof, eba, namala, we all know. Maupe says, this is gourmet now, gourmet, not gourmet, for a traditional wedding. Then they begin to argue on the kind of food she's serving. The conversation got heated up until they all had to separate. Now we see Chooks and MG still thinking of a solution. Now Chooks suggests that MG should sell his power bike. Ah, my baby. Ah, while talking, Abby arrives to settle things out with Chooks, following the advice given to her by her uncle's wife. So getting to the door, Chooks wants her in, but Maugbe doesn't. Currently, he knows he's in trouble, so he doesn't want anyone to know where he is. While Chooks and Abby were talking, Maugbe closes the door on them. See, I beg, this is more important, Jare. Ah, you still worry he has to sell his bike. Chooks says, ah, that is not okay now. Now, Ebi will think I don't care about her with the way you just lock the door on her. Now, Maosi gets into her room only to meet a gift on her dining. Ah, from who? She reads the card on it and it reads, From a king to his queen. Hey? Maosi says, It's from Otumba. <laughs> it will shock you. Finally, Maogbe had to sell the bike. Now, when the buyer comes to take the bike out, Maogbe is really worried. Chuk start petting him. See, don't worry. At least they've gathered two million naira. Then, suddenly, a van drives up behind them. Get in! What? They lift them up and straight inside the vehicle, they kidnap them. Now, they carry them into a secret room. They threw them inside. They were still begging. Please, now. We, didn't, we don't know anything. Please. Only to hear Barry Wonder's voice. Ah, what are you doing here? Barry says, they used him as collateral after gambling away their money the other night. Ah, then the goons ask, where's our money? Where's our money? Maugbe says, they have the money, but well, it's not complete. Then the guy says, then they should try to get the rest quick and then knock on the door to call them when the money is complete. Hey. Later, we see Lily discussing with her family travel agent, Emeka, that will be helping her to bring her parents from overseas to Badagri for the wedding. Also, in Maosi's room, the AC is faulty, so she's worried and then calls for help. The doorbell rings. Hopefully, they are here to fix it. She opens the door only to find Abby instead. Oh. The first thing Abby sees are the gifts. Lots of gifts in her room. Mousy says she suspects the gifts are from Motumba because he has been trying to get back with her since. He? Then she asks Abby if Abby will spend the rest of the day with her. Oh, of course, of course. Eh, where there is food, she will spend the night there. Okay. Few minutes later, two men walks in, Don and the repairman. Don asks him to go fix the AC quickly. Now, as the man walks away, Maosi walks into the living room only to see Don. Now, remember they had issues the other day at the reception entrance, eh? So Maosi begins to vent again. Excuse me, excuse me, how dare you what's in here? Is that how they let people into any room as they like? And you, 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 how could you let a total stranger walk into the room? Abby keeps trying to explain to her that they are here to fix the ACO 
angry man still refused to listen. She kept ranting until the repairman comes out. Oh, 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 they are even two. Don quickly apologizes. Eh? We, we are sorry, we are sorry. And then they leave. Mousy continued blasting Ebi until Ebi could say something. Auntie, they came to fix the AC. Oh. Uh, why didn't you tell me it's the, it's the facility manager? Anyway, and the AC is working now. Now that night, Maunyo already has a surprise for his fiancée. And Auntie Maugbe also goes to the front desk to complain that they haven't come to clean her room since morning. No. Oh, sorry ma, the receptionist checks. And then, ma, it's past your checkout time. Eh? She says, yes, it's past your checkout time. Please hold on, let me explain. Maokbe says, wahala. As the receptionist tried to explain what is going on, she did not even listen. Now, Dr. Mountain and his wife is also trying to use that night as an opportunity to, mm, mm, you know, since their baby is already with a nanny and they are all alone. Oh. Now, as they are about to start the show, the light goes off. Ah. Maunyo and Lily are also in the bathtub, having a nice time and talking. She asks him to do ah, as in do ah, you know, a back massage. Now she turns, and as she's about to start the back massage, the light goes off also. Ah. Maunyo then comes out of his room to complain in his towers. The light went off in my room, and Timaokwe says, the receptionist says they turn off the light too, because we are past our checkout time. Check out. Ow. We are supposed to be here for three nights. The receptionist says, no, it's just one night. She quickly showed them the receipt. Ah, this is Maokbe's signature, right? And she says, she knows these guys are up to no good. And they can't even get in touch with them also. And Maokbe says, they should call that his friend, um, Chooks. Since Maokbe's number is not going through. Do you have his number? Maokbe says, ah. Call Ebi now, she should have it. Maokbe calls Ebi's number, and at that time, both Ebi and Mousy were having a good time at the spa. Now their phone rings, but they refuse to speak. Nobody should disturb their peace and enjoyment. Now the masseuse says, The ID says, Mom. Mom, quickly, Ebi gets up. Now the manager arrives at the reception. Good. Hey, Miss Manager, Maokbe begins to explain again. See, tomorrow is my traditional wedding. And we paid for three nights, blah, blah, blah. The manager says, no, no, you did not. You only paid for one night, today. Friday and tomorrow is not paid for. What? Commotion starts. The bride is devastated. The manager says, Maogbe told them that he has a bank issue and he's going to sort it out. Maogbe says, but that doesn't mean we should cut our water and lights without advance warning. The manager says, yes, they did now. They informed Maogbe who already signed. Hey. And she says she knew it. She knew these boys were up to no good. The mousey and Ebi arrives. Ah, what's going on? Auntie says, where have you two been? Ebi was about to say this spa when mousey slaps her mouth, spatula, spatula, eh? We were shopping for something for my kitchen. Is this how you went to spatula? Auntie asks. Now they begin to explain everything that is going on to mousey when we see Pamela coming. Pamela arrives. The pressure is getting worse. Pamela says, their brother mousey has left. Left? Yes, he left. He has gone. Ah, uh, why? She says, he received a call from the hospital and he upped and left. Ah, uh-uh. Now, while the commotion is going on, Don arrives to attend to them. Hey, 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 what's going on? Nobody wants to listen to them until the pastor shouts. What's going on? Maokwe says, why are you shouting at us? He says, is everything all right? Maokwe points at him and he says, don't, don't point at me. Ah, uh-uh. this is why your twins were possessed by demons. We are not animals here, are we? And he just kept quiet immediately. Don. You have the floor. Don says, Is everything all right? Mousy is still reeling from my issue with him the other day. Says, Sir, it is not your concern if everything is right or wrong with us. Why do you just pop in people's business? The receptionist then greets Don. Don says, Okay, what's the problem? As Gloria, the manager, is about to explain, Maunyo jumps in. Hey, I will explain what's happened. I will explain. He narrated everything to him of how Maube and Chooks actually paid for one night instead of three. Now the manager is throwing them out because they have not paid. Don says, ah, oh, that's a problem. So, where are the people that are supposed to pay for you? They are nowhere to be found. Don says, ah, oh, that means you are owing us, right? Maunyo asks, by the way, who are you? Don says, um, he's just a friend of the hotel and he will help them fix everything, okay? They should relax, relax. Okay, as he leaves, a Emeka, the travel agent, arrives. Lily says to Maunyo, Mayo, my parents are here. Emeka says, no. He couldn't find her parents who... What? He has been at the port since morning and he didn't see them. They called their numbers and it switched off. Ah, 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 ah. Lily begins to panic more. 
another commotion. Commotion raised to power plenty. Mousy says, they should all come to a room where they can relax and then think of a solution. Now, while in the room, Mao Kwe is busy looking at the room, comparing it to the tiny one they gave to her and her daughter. Hey, hey. So she asks, Mousy, are you going to tell us how you got this gigantic room? Mousy says, ah, it's Otumba. He has been trying to woo her back, so he has been sending her gift. Otumba, are you sure? She says, yes now, who else? She says, ah. She knows Otumba has taste too, but this eh, this is on the high side. Now, the guys that kidnapped Maube and Chooks and Bariwanda for their debt continues to threaten them. One of them even saying he will kill Maube by himself. Then the second enters and then whispers something to him. They both exit the room, leaving the door open. Maube tiptoes to the door to see if they can escape and immediately they run. Now, Otumba finally calls Maosi. He apologizes for calling her at such late hour. He says, he is worried about Barry Wonder. He hasn't seen him since. Mousy says, ah. She has not seen Barry since morning either. But don't worry, as soon as I see him, I will call you back ASAP. Okay, thank you, Mousy. No, thank you, Otumba. Otumba says, for what? She says, for the sweets, the flowers, chocolates, the first class treatment. Otumba says, ah. He doesn't know what she's talking about, too. He didn't do all those things. Then he ends the call. Now Don arrives to give them the good news that everything is set. Their rooms are back in order so they cannot return to their rooms. They are all happy, except Lily. Bella then asks, what's going on? Marion says, her parents arrived and they couldn't find them. Ah. Don says, um, he knows some guy that can help them out. Quickly, Lily gives him their details. Now, all this while, Mousy is beginning to suspect Don to be the mystery admirer. Maupe then calls her daughter so they can return to their own cubicle, the small room. Now, Maupe, Chooks, and Barry were able to escape from the hand of the bad guys. Now they return to his room. Barry wants to call Otumba to report to him that they squandered his money. These guys grab him, they collect his phone, and then lock him up in the toilet. Now, Don has helped them contact the port authority, and Lily's parent has been found. What happened was that they arrived. Now at the port, they met another couple going to the Badagri area and then decide to go on a tour with those couple without informing their child. Anyway, all has been settled now. All this while, Mao Si still keeps staring at Don, hey, suspecting him. So after Mao Yo and Lily left, Mao Si turns to Don. Is you right? Don says, uh, you have to be more specific than that. She insists, it's you. Don could not hide it anymore, so he says, uh, yeah, yeah, it's me. But what gave me away? Mousy says everything, then they both laugh and start gisting normal normal. Now, Maupe has fired her daughter Ebi for not marrying Otumba back then. Now see what he is doing for Mousy. She doesn't know that it is done doing those things. Anyway, Ebi angrily walks out of the room complaining that she is not a kid. She can choose whoever she wants to marry by herself. Now walking out of the room, she sees Maupe and Chooks. They are back. Confused, looking about that, what are they going to do? How we are, how are they going to face their families? Oh, Ebi quietly sneak back to inform everyone that Maupe and Chooks are back. Before we know it, Mao and Auntie Maupe comes out to meet them, threatening to beat them, asking what happened. Then we are shown a flashback of what actually happened with the money and the casino. Now, the other day when the manager took them on a tour, the manager Gloria left them there at the casino and they went ahead to gamble away everything they have. They actually won, but Don shows them why he's called the Don. He upped the stake, and greedy Maube gave in to his greed, and Don won everything back from him, even loaning him money and still winning the money. This puts Maube in big trouble. They explain everything to them. Maunyan then asks, why would they do him such a thing to him? Maube explained that ah, the business is suffering, and they are owing rent. Nothing is going well for them, so they thought this to be an opportunity for them to make some money. Maoyan says, but they've put them in serious stress, so much that his fiancé is now in the room discussing about cancelling the wedding, while they are out here even hiding. Maokbe says, no, they did not hide though, they were kidnapped. Kidnapped? Auntie Maokbe says, I've been begging on your behalf and you are still lying, kidnapped. Then Chuk sees Don and Mousy coming from a distance, See, that's him, that's him, that's the man that kidnapped us. He begins to insult Don. Now Don arrives and confirms that yes, it's true. 
he had his guys kidnap them and he locked them up in a room in the hotel and later asked his boys to even let them go. Maugbe says, it's a lie, oh. we escaped. Hmm. Did you really escape? Look at it very well. Did you escape? Obviously, it was Don who asked his guys to intentionally leave the door open for them so they could walk away. Now, Lily and Pamela are still in the room, worried sick about Lily's parents. When there comes a knock, with Lily thinking it's her parents, oops, it's the hotel staff, pastor. Now, he brings a letter from Mao Nyo. Mao Nyo asks him to read it out loud. So, he reads out the lovely letter, even adding his own pastoral ad libs. Hey, I won't lie, the letter is sweet and romantic. Now, after reading, there comes another knock. It's a maker, the travel agent. Quickly, she jumps up. Did you find them? He says, Yes, finally, by the grace of our Lord, the traditional wedding took place and it was a success. Now, guys, let's gather for a family picture. Say, Kujus, Kujus, and then the movie ends. Before we go, we are giving a little post credit scene. But the one that now works for Don. So Don invites Maugbe and Chooks to play a game with him, and these guys reject. He says, no, they don't have to bet to as per he is now running things with their sister. Ah, Maugbe insists, no, 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 he's not playing. Don laughs and claps for them. These guys have learned their lesson. Then the movie ends. So guys, what do you think about this movie? Is it as interesting as the first movie, Introducing the Kujus, which will also be on our channel? Well, whatever you think, let us have your say in the comment section. So thank you for watching this video. Now for more amazing content and film recaps, please subscribe to this channel. Once again, thank you for watching and until next time, I am Sam and this is The Film Village.